How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Ruffle Rowlett, and welcome back to a brand new rumor and leak video. Today, we've got some stuff to talk about. Let's get started. Now, first off, is this post on 4chan uh, by just a random anonymous person who said Scarlet and Vile DLC is fun and says, I'm having a lot of fun with this game and I hope you'll enjoy it too. And they included this image of what looks to be, quote unquote, the Blueberry Academy in the background and the character wearing an outfit that I don't think, uh, I think it's from the, the, the actual, like, I think this outfit that they're wearing is the one that you get for pre-ordering the DLC or something like that. I think it's something like, like along those lines. I think at least that's what the outfit is, but he's also got himself, um, a team here of, uh, I think, uh, well, he's got a crocodile, uh, you know, sorry, um, I forget the name of it, the Final Evolution of Coco, a few other ones, and yeah, whatever, it doesn't really matter. The point of what this is, if we actually look at the image itself, um, and this general, like, post is that it's supposed to be, quote-unquote, the Blueberry Academy, which is the second part DLC. Now, I'm gonna be real and just say this is fake. Um, it does have some feeling to it, like, it could be real, and I only say that because of, like, the way some of these textures look. It just looks very Pokemon-esque, I'm not even gonna lie. It looks like... It's gonna sound really bad. Scuffed enough that it could be real, okay? But I do not think this is real. And if it is real, then it would be pretty crazy that somebody's already been able to get their hands on the DLC this early on. But I'm gonna assume this is fake just based on the fact that uh, I think the bridge leading into uh, the Blueberry Academy is much larger. Uh, if I can actually find and get my hands on um, the trailer, I can show it to you guys. But I think uh, Blueberry Academy Pokemon, if we actually look it up, I think the actual entrance to it, um, like the bridge leading into it, is a bit larger. I don't think it's that small. I think it's much bigger. So I will see if I can find an image of that. But either way, I want to know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. Do you think this actual image is real? Do you think ju someone genuinely has their hands on the DLC already? Um, just let me know. Because if we look, here's like an image from the distance of the actual... Uh, entrance area and all that and you guys can see there's a bridge leading in uh, but the bridge here looks a little bit I mean, I could be crazy for assuming this but I think it is a bit more wide uh, And I feel like you'd be able to see if you looked like further into it You'd be able to see kind of like a more cool entrance This doesn't really look like that like no offense But this doesn't really look like that cool entrance leading into the place like what you would come to expect But either way, this was the first post let's look, move over to the next thing which is this right here So this was a post from soul silver who by the way for those do not know. He is a leak analyst, and he's breaking down here uh, some of the stuff that's been posted by Riddler Koo. Again, if you're brand new, Riddler Koo is a legitimate leaker. He's an actual leaker. He's a guy called the Riddler, and this Riddler does like to kind of put out information, and he's been putting out some stuff about Pokemon Black and White remakes lately. So here's what they're saying. Potential spoilers. When it comes to Koo and the future Unova game poll, and then he's referring to Eclipse here, who specifically made a post uh, where he says, let me tell you something, and if you don't know what Eclipse is, he's like a, a theorizer, a rumor, leak, and uh, analyst list. He says, let me tell you something. Paradox Unova, as you may be wondering, sounds strange and an unrealist unrealistic choice to offer in a poll, but exactly for this, being so extra and so precise of a concept to even think about it. That's what makes it realistic, except, uh, except great for once. Now, what is he talking about here? Well, there was a poll by the Riddler. The poll basically included four things. It included Black and White 3, Let's Go Unova, uh, Legends Curum and Paradox Unova, those four. But Paradox Unova was the only weird one. The other three just kind of are logical and make sense. But the Paradox Unova one was a weird one. And I said that that's the one that I think is going to be happening. But a lot of people think it's going to be Legends Curum or uh, Black and White 3 or Let's Go Unova. I don't think it's any of those three. It is Paradox Unova, in my opinion, that's going to be the real one. But what is Paradox Unova? Is it a brand new game? Is it Paradox Forms? What exactly is it? Well, he here's the theory from Eclipse. Paradox Unova doesn't necessarily mean that Paradox Pokemon are present, but rather that the region and the new concept for Gen 5 Remake and Revisitation is now paradoxical, all being shifted, characters above all, except for key events that will expand further more like always. So basically, the concept here, and this is actually something I spoke about, which is, we might be going back to Unova, but not Unova in the way we're used to it, not Unova in the way we know it, but different, right? Like he says, Paradox Unova doesn't necessarily mean that the Paradox Pokemon are present, but rather that the region and the new concept for Gen 5, the remake slash revisitation, is now paradoxical. It's a paradox of what, like, you know, a remake should be, or a, a revisit should be, all being shifted, characters above all. I believe this is uh, this is the right path to follow. Another Legends would be too soon to propose, and uh, that was the only other possible option to me. Black and White 3 is nonsense marketing-wise, and even less sense uh, makes Let's Go Unova, I agree. Black and White 3, as much as you guys think, oh my god, I want Black... No, it's, it's a horrible choice from a marketing standpoint, because by putting the number 3 on it and just saying that it's like the third of something... 
instantly cancels out a shit ton of people. A lot of people will just not be willing to buy it just because it's the third of something because they haven't played the first two. I have met so many of you guys watching this that only started playing Pokemon in Sword and Shield. I've met you guys who only started playing with Scarlet and Violet who've never played the previous games. Why would you buy a game called Black and White 3 if you haven't played Black and White 1 and Black and White 2? It just makes no sense. And again, I'm talking to about this in also a casual way, how casuals will view this rather than, you know, you, know, you guys who are watching these videos but some of you may have started in Scarlet and Violet, but now you're deep into it and you've gone back and played the older games to see what they were all about, right? That's definitely a possibility, but I'm talking about the casual fan base and the casual fan base will not buy a third game of, of whatever, right? Um, unless they are you, which is a, you know, a more hardcore, more in, into Pokemon type person. But he says, so wrapping it up, Paradox Unova is the choice. Also, this character is from the remake of Unova and will also be seen in those games. Maybe related to Drayden, but for some, uh, some, uh, for the same reason, Paradox Unova is now the option I'm looking for. And the character, uh, uh, character are the same from the past Gen Five, but with different ages and personalities. So he's trying to suggest that basically this could be Drayden, but this is a Paradox version of him, a younger version of him of sorts, right? Why not? It being Drayden itself, uh, instead of being related to it, not so many characters have such a long white sideburns. In fact. Uh, only two, these two, which is true. The only two of them actually have like those big white sideburns, which is true. And again, people keep, we were thinking, oh, he's just like uh, related to, you know, to Drayden. But what if he literally is Drayden? Just an alternate version of Drayden, an alternate universe version. The same way that Sada and Tudo technically are kind of alternates of each other from different, you know, places, different universes, different like instances of the Pokemon world, which is kind of crazy if you really think about it. But I thought it was worth mentioning and then go back to what Sol said here, which is when it comes to Ku's future Unova game poll, there is 100% one real option. However, once we actually see what the game is, it may be called one thing, but feel like another thing. For example, even if the answer might be black and white three, it might officially be called something else like Legends Unova, but the content of the game might be closer to what Eclipse and Sidonia have suggested below, a paradoxical version of the Unova we once knew. All that to say that personally, I think whatever the true answer to the poll is, the game itself might pull from a mix of the options and more. It could be, I could be completely wrong, to uh two and instead is definitely one or the other but this is just how i see it we all view certain things differently so who knows so i think i think and this is what pokester says here what if it's all all of the above that's what i think makes the most sense right but the the the, the definitive choice is the paradox unova because everything would be a paradox of itself right like the whole the whole literal game would be black and white but not black and white. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? If I men mention this, guys, you can comment in the section, comment section down below if you understand it. Basically, it is a version of Unova. It is a game of Unova, but it isn't really Unova. It's not like, you know, it's set maybe in Unova, or it's a region that's similar to Unova, or something along those lines, and characters might be similar to characters we've seen in the original Black and White and Black and White 2, but they aren't the same. They're different people. That's basically what I'm trying to get across. This game would draw from all of that. They, it will take aspects from Let's Go. It will take aspects from Legends. It will take some stuff from, from uh, what a Black and White 3 game would have looked like, the story and that kind of stuff. Uh, some of the characters, some of the aspects of the characters, some of the world, whatever. Kind of a mix of all those things. Because you have to remember, one big thing about Black and White, you have to remember, they were the worst performing Pokemon games. Uh, as a brand new generation, and I'm not counting remakes right now because remakes are a different thing, you know, in terms of sales and all that. There's a different expectations on how much they're going to sell and all that. I am just talking now about when a brand new generation comes out, aka Red Blue, uh, Gold Silver, freaking Ruby Sapphire, right? Uh, Diamond Pearl, Black and White, X and Y, uh, Sun and Moon, uh, Sword and Shield, and Scarlet and Violet. Those are brand new generation games. Black and white are the worst performing ones. They are the ones that sold the least amount of copies. They are the least popular, technically. And I'm, again, the reason why you guys might think, no, black and white is super popular, everybody loves black and white, is because you live in a echo chamber of stuff online. The online world of Pokemon is not the only one that exists. Not everybody who likes Pokemon is online sitting, you know, uh, vehemently, like, proposing that black and white should be the next thing to happen. Not everybody does that, okay? There's a large part of people that are, but black and white just generally speaking, are the worst performing Pokemon games. In terms of sales, in terms of popularity, they are the least performing ones. Of course, Kanto is number one. There's no undeniable, it's undeniable, right? Kanto is number one. Uh, Scarlet and Violet are doing well, 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 well better, way better than Black and White are. Remember, Black and White came out at the tail end of the DS era. 
and they still didn't perform up to par of where they should have been um, because they were like a soft reset of the franchise. My point is, the only reason I'm even bringing this up is that you have to understand, they remaking the games might already have a bad expectation for it, right? To make this clear, let's pull up the sales of Pokemon main games. We're going to just look at the sales here. And I often do this. I think this is kind of a common thing we do on this channel, which is to bring up the sales of Pokemon games. But the reason I'm bringing it up is to make this clear to you guys. So here's the thing. Here is every Pokemon game that's ever been released, right? You guys can see it. It's on the screen. So if you look at black uh, Pokemon, red, blue, and uh, red, green, and blue, right? They sold 31.05 million copies, right? They sold 31 million copies uh, if you just round it off. You had then Pokemon Yellow, which on its own sold 14.6 million copies. You had Fire Red, Leaf Green, which were the remakes of these games, which sold 12 million. And then you even had 1.5 million sales of the uh, red, green, blue, and yellow, uh, like, virtual console releases. That was 1.5 million copies. Then you look at the, uh, I guess, another Kanto game, which would be Pokemon Let's Go Beach New, which sold 15 million copies. Remember, that was a remake, uh, and that was the first Pokemon game on the Switch, when the Switch had just came out, and it still sold 15 million copies, which just shows you how strong Pokemon is. But... We continue down, and now we're going to look at only these main games, right? Only these, like, the generational games, which is Gold, Silver, Red, Blue, Ruby, Sapphire. So here we go. Gold and Silver, 23 million copies. Ruby, Sapphire, okay, 16 million copies. Then we go down here. Diamond and Pearl, 17 million copies. And then you look at Black and White, 15.6 million copies, right? That's not really that great. It's so far the lowest uh, out of the brand new generations, right? 16 million for Ruby, Sapphire. 17 here, 23 here, 15 here. This is when it fell down the most. Then you have Pokemon X and Y, which didn't even have a third version or anything, but on its own still managed to outsell Black and White, which sold 16.6 .6 million, almost 17 million copies. Sun and Moon did 16.3 million, Sword and Shield did 25 million, and then Skull and Violet did 22 million. So if they were to remake Black and White, it is the least performing one out of these, right? It's technically the worst performing one. I'm not saying it's the worst game. I actually like black and white, but I'm just trying to make the point clear from a business perspective, right? Now, the thing you have to notice here, once you start looking at all these, is how did some of the other games do? Like, for example, every single one of these games usually had, like, early on, had a third version. It stopped at X and Y, and then we had one in Ultra Sun and Moon. But Ultra Sun and Moon actually sold 9 million copies, almost 10 million, which is pretty good. Platinum sold only 7 Emerald's only seven as well, but then Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, which were a remake, sold almost 15 million copies. I think they must have, by the end of its whole like cycle, must have probably hit like 15 million at some point, but basically 15 million copies were sold of that game, right? Which was a remake. So the thing is, the possibility of releasing a black and white game and it performing well is definitely there because you have the proof from Ruby and Sapphire because they sold 16 million copies and, you know, we had Black and White, which technically only sold 15 points, you know, 6 million, which is not a big margin of difference. But the difference, though, is also the fact that they already had their remakes and it was in a different era. Black and White, they haven't had their remakes yet. And depending on how they remake them and keep in mind, these were the first time the Pokemon games got like massive, just criticism like black and white was when when people just kind of started hating some of the choices being made and then mostly the reason they hated it was because of the whole like soft reset they didn't like the designs of some of the pokemon they didn't like the direction of where it was going people just got a little bit antsy about it especially coming off of the heels of pokemon you know platinum and diamond and pearl which people really loved uh so a lot of people were pissed off about these games but that's the thing even though they're the worst performing ones it doesn't necessarily mean right like, and this is the whole point of what I'm trying to get across, is that just because they sold the least doesn't inherently mean that they won't get remade. But it doesn't mean either that they are super strong enough that they can carry, you know, themselves all on just that, you know, on that, that one thing, that they can do a black and white 3 and that's going to sell well enough. Because you can see it, black and white, then black and white 2, and the sales will just keep going down and being like the half of what they were before. Uh, that's just going to be the case. But if they do a regular remake, they can probably expect to at least hit, like, the at least the numbers of, like, Heart Gold Soul Silver, right? Because Heart Gold Soul Silver sold 12.7 million. So they can probably expect the same amount of sales as that. But that's if it's a regular remake. Keep in mind that this year, this next year, isn't really a remake year. And Generation 9 is not a, gen a remake generation. Generation 10 is. So I don't expect to be seeing, you know, black and white next year because of the fact that, well, not the right timing... Two, I don't think they're going to do a black and white three because it just doesn't make any sense. It's not strong enough to because one, it's the least selling one. So it doesn't have enough strength to carry a whole third version, but it does have enough strength to be a remake.
but it's not time for a remake. It's not time for that yet. So the question is, why did the Riddler give us all this stuff? Unless what they're working on is almost similar to how Legends was. Because if you think about what Pokemon Legends was, I don't know if it's included here, but it is actually here. So Legends sold 14.8 million copies, right? And it was part of Generation uh, 8, right? The 8th generation of Pokemon. Um, and then you had Sun and Moon, but actually here in the, in uh, I guess, Sun and Moon, this, that's like the 7th generation. And here you should actually also include Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. But like, you know, Legends sold 14 million copies, which puts it at about the range of like black and white, right? It puts it at about the range of black and white. So what they could do is make a game that that is just a bit of an experiment because that's what Legends Arceus was. Legends Arceus was an experiment, trying out an open world Pokemon game, trying out to see how that functions and also just testing things. So whatever this game ends up being, it could be a test version of all these things, right? Or it could be aware for them to see, hey, can we do like, can we use the concept of a remake but to make something a little bit different or try something a bit different. And that's why I think all those things that were mentioned, a bit of Let's Go, a bit of Legends, a bit of, uh, you know, Black and White 3, like what Black and White 3 would have been, the continuation of the story, the explanation of like, you know, uh, the, 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 you know, the freaking dragons and the ancient dragons and the origin dragons and all that sort of stuff. It would be an explanation of all those things, right? And all that come, kind of coming together by mixing all four of those elements, right? Paradox Unova. It's a version of Unova that isn't the Unova you know, right? It's a different version of it. That's what I personally think could be the case here. Again, I could be totally off base. I could be totally freaking wrong. I don't know. I just, I'm guessing based on what, what I see, but I could be totally off base here. I, I don't really know. Uh, that's all I really have to say about that one. Let's move on to the next thing though which of course is going to be another post by our friends here. This is from Soul Silver. It says, potential spoilers. This is an interpretation of a bug terraform Skeledurge by uh, Pen Paladin on YouTube. It's literally all I need for these, uh, uh, for these rumored terraforms to be good. It's perfectly subtle and low effort, but still makes sense and works well with the original and new design. So this is the new concept that's been talked about. Basically, like... Instead of it just being a terraform Pokemon, that it's also going to gain like this new terra, like this basically like think about Dynamax Pokemon and then Gigantamax Pokemon and how Gigantamax Pokemon actually changed the design of the Pokemon. Well, basically here, this is what would be the Terra Maxing, right? Basically making the terra Terraform Pokemon change its actual like design somewhat, like we see up here. This could be a cool, pretty cool concept. So he continues on and says. Um, as of right now, we haven't heard much about these forms, and I'm starting to doubt a lot about them. So I have another big tweet planned uh, on this exact topic. But for now, I just want to dream about this art uh, being so close to what we actually get because I love it and I'd be happy with its simplicity. Now, personally, I'm not sure if I'm really cool with the simplicity. Uh, and he also said there's actually a uh, genius. Uh, this artwork concept is genius because of the Spanish myth of the cro uh, Cocolona, which could be just perfect way to mix the bug type with Skeledurge in the Iberian region, which I guess is just based on like um, a mythological creature of sorts, which would be pretty, pretty cool actually with the bug bug terror type there. It would be pretty sick. But yeah, that's that one of those. Uh, we kind of already went into that. Uh, then there's also some thoughts about like one of these rumored Pokemons. I've covered this in previous videos. I'd pre please, I would just recommend go check out my old videos because they explain some stuff way better, uh, especially about Riddler Koo because he was talking about uh, some f like four new Pokemon that we're going to be getting, like a Paradox Form, a Regional Fake, and uh, some brand new Pokemon, stuff like that. And one of the things is this one about specifically this post he made. Uh, he said Sado, which is I think second, and then which, which or none of them, and then included these four Pokemon. And include a theory with it. Well, here's basically what's being said uh, by some of the people. For example, Jordan said, no doubting you, of course, but can, it can explain how best wishes equals that. I can't figure it out. Uh, the reason Dusk Glycorov got the code name to begin with was because it was a request and wish from someone, likely a producer or someone high up. Therefore, be, best uh, best wishes is a special form Pokemon. And what he says here is, ironically, I think that uh, this, uh, this could finally be a Dawn form Lycanroc. Obviously, this is pure speculation, but Ku's earlier riddle actually already hinted to this same form, hints for whatever this is from generation 1 to 8. Not a starter, roughly translated as best wishes slash hope in Japanese. Best wishes is what we see in Ku's riddle of the Gen 5 movie poster and the Blood Moon. But the big point is, in the Japanese game data, Dusk is called the TPC, and with the same kanji. This kanji has come to be known as a special form Pokemon within the Asian-speaking community, so it doesn't mean it's necessarily Lycanroc, that will get the form, but who knows, Ku could have been using this name literally. Plus, uh, around Ultra Sun and Moon, Let's Go Pichon Eevee, many people were expecting a Dawn Lycanroc to happen to complete the four times of the day, um, okay, and also to complement the Dawn Wings and Dusk Main Necrozma, to me, uh, to me the Dawn uh, Lycanroc is also a possibility uh, to happen and should happen, but Game Freak logic exists. Lol. 
Yeah, it's also curious that Ku chose Midnight Lycan Rock as one of the five options here. He could have put Midday, for example. Many people have always speculated Dawn Lycan Rock uh, would look more like Midnight form because of the Dusk Lycan Rock having he heavily resembles the Midday form. Of course, Dusk Lycan Rock as a form was uh, super random, just a special form for Ultra Sun and Moon and the anime, and the same could be the case here. It might not be Lycan Rock, but instead a completely random one to eight, uh, generation one to eight Pokemon. But yeah, just kind of an interesting little side theory, just worth bringing up. And then there is just some quick stuff here. Friday means a bunch of Pokemon stuff. Everything, everyone is talking about the new manga protagonist, which we see right here, a new character, which is interesting. It's going to see how that's going to turn out. Uh, Scovillain also looks great in new promo arts. We got that. Uh, the Pokemon card gym here. Um, and then overall, it's just a bunch of mix of some stuff. We have some, you know, new merch too as well just coming out. Just some mini stuff, not nothing too crazy. Um, just a little bit of everything, right? Some Pokemon Go stuff going on right now and Pokemon Unite, just both having a bunch of like new events going down for those of you know who are interested. But for the most part, that's it, ladies and gents. I want to thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out and bye-bye, ladies and gentlemen.